Welcome to the announcement of the 2023 Cheers BevX Award winners. I'm Beverage Information Group Vice President Jeremy Nadelka. And I'm Cheers Editor Melissa Dowling. We're here to honor the best beverage programs in the country, including on-premise operations across the restaurant, hospitality, and entertainment industries. All of today's winners were chosen by our judges based on entries that demonstrated a new or significantly expanded beverage program between July of 2022 and June of 2023. They were scored on that program's innovativeness and success, as well as increases in efficiency, sales, and customer satisfaction. You can read more about all of these beverage programs in the winter issue of Cheers, which comes out in November. And now, on to the winners. First up is Best Single Concept Hospitality. And the winner is Lumiere Brasserie and Bar at the Fairmont Century Plaza in Los Angeles. As part of a bar refresh, the hotel partnered with Kathy Casey Liquid Kitchens to develop a new beverage program. Operations were streamlined by creating a cocktail kitchen where all prep and batching takes place, which also added consistency to the cocktail menu execution. Lumiere also created a new selection of brunch cocktails and added a unique apothecary bottled cocktails menu to dinner. In the first few months post-refresh, cocktail sales rose more than 15%. A renovation of the lobby bar with a focus on California ingredients is part of a planned phase two. Congratulations to Lumiere. Our next category is multi-concept hospitality and the winner is Princess Cruises. Princess recently revamped its beverage offerings across all 15 ships in its fleet. It partnered with celebrity mixologist Rob Floyd to create a Good Spirits at Sea cocktail bar. It launched a winemaker dinner in April, leveraging the expertise of Chuck Wagner, and it created an Alaska beverage program for the seven ships that sail in Alaska, complete with coffee and hot chocolate-based drinks, frozen drinks, and flights of Alaska wines and beers. Princess also partnered with Diageo to create a series of pop-up martini bars and hosted a bartender competition with Bacardi. Congratulations to Princess Cruises. The next category is Single Concept Restaurant, and the winner is Firebird's Wood Fire Grill. Firebird's increased marketing for its seasonal cocktail programs using digital and social channels, driving a 15% increase in bar sales year over year. At the same time, the company saw a decrease in overall cost due to menu engineering. Firebirds also revamped its training for bartenders and bar managers to help drive additional sales, increase execution, and drive guest satisfaction. Congratulations to Firebirds Wood Fire Grill. Our next winner in the category of multi-concept restaurant is the Culinary Institute of America. While the CIA operates primarily as a college to train the nation's future beverage professionals, it also has four on-campus public restaurants and a brewery which serve as educational labs. The brewery was named Brewery of the Year for New York State in 2019, with beers sold in the school's restaurants and distributed throughout the state. The four restaurants on campus feature craft cocktails and an innovative wine program, plus a partnership with nearby Asahi Shuzo Saki. Training for students includes level one and level two certifications from the Court of Master Sommeliers and a five-day program from Beverage Alcohol Resource. Congratulations to the Culinary Institute of America. Our next BevX category is Single Concept Entertainment, and the winner is AMC Theaters. <laughs> AMC revamped its beverage program in 2022 to focus on flavorful, on-trend cocktails, many with ties to famous actors and actresses. 
the movie feature drink program paired new drinks with blockbuster movies like the one featuring Terramana Tequila for Black Adam, which was starring The Rock, the celebrity behind the brand. Training materials include recipe cards, tasting notes, how-to videos, weekly newsletters to general managers, and on-site visits. Beverage program revenue has now surpassed 2019 levels and continues to grow. Congratulations to AMC Theaters. Our next BevEx Award is Innovative Independent, which recognizes a restaurant with fewer than five locations. This year's winner is Cavagna in San Francisco. The beverage team at Cavagna took a trip to South America to learn about Latin cultures and build a program reflecting an authentic experience. The restaurant's cocktail menu features high-end and imported mezcals, tequilas, piscos, gins, and rums, alongside traditional ingredients like sweet pepper and cactus. The wine list focuses on Chile, Argentina, and Spain, creating a showcase of Latin American culture. Congratulations to Cavagna. Our final BevEx Award celebrates an individual who is raising the bar. This year's recipient is Kira Webster, a mixologist based in St. Louis. Kira recently served as beverage director at Sado and is currently with 801 Fish. Kira is among the beverage industry's young leaders at just 29 years old. As a second generation Japanese American, Kira has focused on bringing Asian ingredients to the forefront of cocktails. She also won second place at the 2022 National Shochu Competition, creating the Fit for a Hamiko cocktail inspired by an ancient Japanese queen. Kira's educational background is in psychology, which has helped her understand the hospitality industry and its customers. Congratulations to our Raising the Bar winner, Kira Webster. Congratulations again to all of the 2023 BevX winners. You can read more about their beverage programs in the winter issue of Cheers next month. And Melissa, I understand you had a chance to talk to some of our winners about what made them successful. That's right, I did. And here they are in their own words. I think when people hear a question like that, their immediate response is alcohol trends and purchasing decisions, which tequila seems to be the clear winner over the last few years. Um, more is being consumed and also more companies or varieties and, and the expanse of just the general agave spirit market is growing within the United States. I think more importantly, though, to the heart of that question is that we're seeing a lot of shifts in just consumer trends and demand. Um, flavor and experiencing flavor is super important to guests, but the healthfulness or the consumption or possibly the concern of overconsumption are causing people to shift their buying patterns. So either they're coming out and wanting a really nice cocktail, and then in between a second cocktail, they may substitute a non-alcoholic offering, which they're of course now expecting to be as interesting, or we're still seeing pretty decent strength in what I'm calling like the demi portions, or the opportunity for them to buy a half portion. We find a lot of people are enjoying that uh, opportunity. That's great for lunch service, but as more of the younger clientele who are health focused come through, they still want to have as many flavor experiences in their time as possible, but they're trying to either decrease the overall alcohol consumption or sugar, whatever each individual might be concerned about. I've seen a lot of um, expectations with quality. I think COVID gave people a lot of time. Like I, I know I saw a lot of people that were really getting into making cocktails at home or getting into like learning about different spirits. And um, I saw those, uh, those machines that like make like classic cocktails for you. And I, I, it does it's not as much of a thing anymore, but it was something that was super popular during COVID. I heard ads for it all the time. I saw billboards for it. And so now I feel like people, like pre-COVID cocktails were a little bit more of a mystery because every, anyone could go out and get one. And then whenever 
the demand for, well, like there wasn't, there was a, still a demand for it, but you couldn't, there was an opportunity to go out and get one. People were like, oh, I have to learn how to do this myself. And they realized like, oh, this is a lot harder than I thought it was. So now they re- like more people are aware that it doesn't take a whole lot of effort to make a mediocre, or like a subpar cocktail. So the expectations are higher now. They're like, well, I can make like, I can make a really simple old fashioned at home. So when they go out to a, a bar or restaurant now, like I expect it to be proper. I expect it to be good. I expect it to be with a good quality um, sugar, good quality cherry, good quality whiskey, especially if they're if they're paying a little bit more for it. So I think quality of ingredients and quality of how you make the cocktail has definitely gone up post COVID. I like to travel. um, And if I'm traveling, I'm certainly going to check out, you know, whatever hot bars or restaurants are in the area and uh, reach out to my friends and locals where I should go. But um, here in the the home office here at Firebridge, we actually have a menus of the future committee that we put together um, that I'm on and our executive chef and a few other people. Um, and we have actually traveled to other cities. Um, like we went to Austin last year um, just to go, okay, here's some great places. Let's check it out. Um, it's, it's almost a bit of a marathon because you end up having to go to like three lunches and two dinners and then three bars after. So obviously you're pacing yourself, but just to see, hey, what's going on out there? Um, what looks good? Obviously some things won't work for our concept, but it, it's just nice to to see what they have and how we can bring that home. Um, we just moved into a new office last year as well. Um, and I don't know if you can see behind me here, but we have a full um, R&D kitchen and bar. And so that has been great because, um, you know, to make drinks just like they do in the restaurants, not go into a restaurant and get in anyone's way. Um, we do have all the equipment in the kitchen so we can get in there and play with that as well. If we want, um, we can bring tasting panels here. Um, so that's been, we get a lot of great feedback from them, what they like, what they don't like, and we can make tweaks. Um, so it's really been, you know, how the, a lot of inspiration from um, incorporating the culinary aspects into the beverage program as well. Yes, uh, Rob has been a great uh, partner for us. We have created uh, one of the unique uh, onboard uh, beverage uh, program and a bar called Good Spirit, the Good Spirit at Sea. A Good Spirit at Sea is a creation uh, of Princess and Rob Floyd. Features uh, just exactly what I have described before, uh, the ports and the cultures and ingredients we have visit where we are able to offer those local experiences for our guests. Uh, uh, also, Rob is uh, heavily uh, involved with our new ship, Sun Princess, the largest that we are building with 25 different bars. So um, the partnership uh, evolves uh, every year. Always great to hear straight from the source. Thanks again to everyone who entered the 2023 Cheers BevX Awards. We can't wait to see what kind of innovative programs the on-premise industry comes up with next. Cheers.